Hey guys, welcome to another Art Critique Club session. So, um, before we go into the first critique for Tiny Homestead here, for the piece you see here, um, right in on the left of me, I, uh, let's talk about a quick organizational thing. Uh, that is that I'm going to uh, make the Art Critiques on the end of each month from now on and not uh, at the beginning, because it just I realize it makes more sense for me to do that. Um, because just how the way, just because of the way Patreon works. So um, I'm going to do that today. It's the first of May, so <laughs> this time it didn't work in time. I originally planned to make this at the beginning of this week, but this is of course now the critique for April, right? For the April um, as as the April rewards, and the next one then will be in, end of May, and everyone has of course the chance to in May re renew their subscription or subscribe uh, as a new uh, Art Critique Club member so we can um, then have the next critique end of May. Um, I hope that works well with, with you guys. I think for me it's much better th this way. So yeah, let's uh, head into the first critique for Tiny Homestead, uh, which is this nice still life piece. Um, and we see uh, um, a piece of strawberry cake there, uh, a cup, cup of coffee or tea maybe, maybe tea because of the color, I guess. Uh, and then we have some nice decoration here, this um, looks like a cherry, some cherry um, leaves or something. Um, this this um, pearl chain and this thing that I have to be honest, I don't exactly know what it is, maybe some kind of just a wooden obelisk or something like uh, just a piece of decoration or maybe it has um, it, 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 it is some something that I don't know spreads a scent or something I'm not sure uh, maybe you can let us know tiny home said uh, but what we see here is like the lunar cycle I guess on on, uh, on the side of it um, and looks interesting. This, this is definitely an interesting object and it um, attracts the eye very much, I think. So, and you wrote to me that um, you would like me to talk a bit about lighting and the resources you used um, or I used to learn uh, how to light such a scene. Um, that we can, of course, do. And I think I may have a couple of other uh, points that I can give you as a feedback um, so you can. Uh, Let's maybe start with uh, with uh, lighting and then head over to a couple of other things when there's a bit of time left, but I think there will be uh, because I'm <laughs> talking fast now. Uh, let me know if I'm talking too fast. <laughs> but um, Okay, so for, for lighting, usually I have a very, very simple approach, I think, to, to the whole lighting thing because I know it is uh, complex and... Uh, I'm usually looking for, yeah, the w ways to make my life easier, um, especially when you don't have like a 3D model to to work off, or maybe a photo model or photo reference that helps you to um, to to locate the right light source. Uh, and in uh, and to make things a bit easier, what I do is I usually pick a single light source. And yours, for example, what you did here, you have. Um, uh, you have these little shadows here and here. Uh, you have some little ones here, mm, here on the on the on the plate. So your light is coming from from this side, right? Maybe even more from the top, like um, around this should be in the light source, I guess. Um, now, of course, you have if, if this is a three-dimensional scene, so you have to see it come, does it come more from the from the back um, or more from the front if we saw this as a three-dimensional um, space uh, of course we have to imagine this in our brains because this is a, a 2d canvas so it's always about imagining all objects we see as three-dimensional uh, so that helps us to to um, uh, find the right spots for the shadows as well because um, if you take this cake here, for example, uh, you have uh, this side of the cake, 
and you have the, this side of the cake and then there's one side that we don't see and another side that we don't see which are these and these um, and what I do is okay I have a light source coming from here maybe from let's make it come from the from from more from our side our viewers side not from the back side because backlighting is of course always a bit tricky <clears throat> so I know the light may shine from from here on this surface so so this surface will reflect the light and then the question is is the light source um, close enough to us as viewers to even hit this spot here or not most likely not because the the um, degree of this this corner here is around 90 degrees um, so it's unlikely that the that the light source is coming so much from from the direct coming coming so much from from the direction we are looking at it that it hits this light and that's also a good decision to to not make it like this because it would look boring because we need shadow to get to, to create depth right so for example what i would do here is uh, let's quickly erase my scribbles here but um, i would take for example this part here this side of the cake put it in shadow like add shadow like you did here with the, the strawberries already um, and then you have quite a simple let's make this again a bit simpler you have quite a simple lighting composition you have one side that reflects the light and one side that doesn't so dark bright you know and to to make this look even more interesting now you have on top of this uh, whoopsie on top of this side you have the strawberries and these are like um, little balls like this one two three right and they are are sticking out from this side and let's imagine the light comes from here and hits the other circles of the strawberries here that you can again make bright and then you would have some shadows here again there you have a very very intense reflection of light and, and, and a very strong um, strong depth depth building up in uh, this scene and uh, you can do the same with the with the cream here you have some rip with cream on here you can do the same um, and then you had you'd have of course the shadow uh, that's cast the, the cake casts on the bottom right so you'd have uh, let me pick another color so you can see that better so you'd have like this in darkness and this these areas here sticking out um, this will create a create a nice impactful full uh, lighting same you can just go ahead and do the same with uh, the cup of uh, tea here for example you'd have this is a round surface so you shouldn't do it like this but should follow the round surface here again imagining the cup as a three-dimensional object and um, maybe do it like this then you'd have um, shadow here then it's casting a, of course a shadow that's going over the plate here then you'd have probably this area here this is light again this is a bit tricky but you just have to try and see like that for example um, yeah and there you are. you just uh, have like this is the other side of course I mean this is again on the back side of the of the light reflecting surface so you'd have a little shadow, shadow here you had one here on the on the um, surface of the T and there you go and work yourself towards yep and you can be more brave with the shadows I see you have these little lines of shadows here you can be a bit more brave of course not for the for the little sticks here because they are very thin but for um, for the cup for for this party for example um, go a bit go a bit wider here so the kind of the light source is a bit deeper the higher it is it is up the smaller other shadows the more it goes down you know this this light the special light you have in summer when the sun goes down and um, and it, it, it casts like long shadows uh, that's what we want to have for a bit more drama
Um, and then of course the next step would be to um, work with reflecting light because that's the tricky thing. We don't have one light source, we have multiple. And there you, when you want to create a more realistic scene, you want to take this into account. But let's make that next time and uh, focus on the simple shad uh, shadows here from one light source. Uh, you can work along there and then we, we see some progress for sure and can care about the more um, complex stuff later on. Um, let's take um, let's take a minute or two. I want to give you a couple of points of feedback just to hand you for um, for for maybe a, another um, improvement in some areas. Is um, one thing is the the coloring. I like these pastel colors. They they are really nice and working very well together. So if we take these. Um, and the color palette here is um, very nice. Um, fits to this theme, I think. It's very mellow, a little bit of like this this washed out melancholic. It's I like that very much. Uh, but then you have this very very dark obelisk here. That is, if you compare this, um, it's a bit out of balance because uh, it is so dark and create such a high contrast that it immediately takes all attention from all the objects. And I don't think you want that here because it's it's an object that's more on the side while it's the, the scene focuses on all three objects because they are kind of circling, um, circling the center of the image. And you lead into the image with maybe with this, this, this cup here and then create this, this nice balance, which is working, basically, but then the, the super dark color, color here takes all attention, which I think would be um, good to avoid. Um, also with the textures, it's a bit difficult here and there, I think, in, in spots where the texture, because you have this, this kind of, what is that? Uh, looks like a bit like jeans or cardboard or something that has this structure, you know? this. Um, like, kind of like a hatching structure. You have this here, and uh, the problem here is that the texture doesn't follow the the, the, the three-dimensional shape of the object, and um, that's what I would avoid when you only apply the texture to to a certain part. I would then apply it to to all the objects, and not only to the surface and the leaves here and not only to the pearls here, but pr probably also to the plate um, or the, on, and the cup, because um, otherwise it looks a bit weird because uh, it um, interferes with how the, the, the brain tries to form a shape, a three-dimensional shape here. Um, so that's maybe a couple of points that I can give you now. Um, apart from that, I'd love to see your improvement uh, after including these tips and um, I hope that was helpful let me know in the in the chat and yeah good luck happy drawing <laughs> thanks very much for being a art club art critique club member so let's head over to the next one which is um, which is Dan uh, Dan submitted this nice uh, storytelling or story heavy piece of that, um, yeah, intensely war fighting uh, experienced mouse that we see uh, in like in an upcoming battle uh, against this, uh, yeah, very very huge crab that I wouldn't uh, want to meet on a on a beach as well. Um, and Dan, you are explaining s some stuff about this. Uh, that this is a small series about a mouse that has set itself the goal of fighting against everything evil in this world. Yeah, you can see that. <laughs> uh, not the most original story. Well, that's not um, that's not a problem. Uh, every story, every good story is, is very simple and usually very, very... Uh, has very, very clear essence. So that's not the problem. Uh, but enough to give inspiration for currently three pictures. Great. Here's... Um, here it was important to me that the mouse has a weapon that arrives against the crab's tank, hence the hammer and the nail, yeah. 
Um, the volcanoes on the crab were supposed to be shells first, but found in the process that volcanoes are more interesting. Um, definitely interesting, yeah. The perspective, I try to show the size of the crab in relation to the mouse. Uh, when pulling the crab back and forth, the legs finally landed a little off the perspective, but I only noticed during the last steps in the process. So they stayed that way. Yeah, that's that happens. Not, not a problem. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's have a look at that. Um, so I love that you are uh, working on um, uh, pieces that, that have a story. Uh, it's what I um, mention continuously that I think it is very, very helpful to have a backstory to uh, align your pieces and your, your concepts after. So that, that really prevents you from um, sitting there with a blank canvas and not knowing what to do. And um, it, it is uh, something that you never know what, what happens in the end, right? Uh, you never know how this will develop. Maybe it will be um, a book in two years or uh, it, it, it will inspire you to something else. So it's, um, it's a very good idea. Uh, as for the art itself, um, I like that you have a lot going on there. So you what you do really well is uh, ex to explain this situation um, and you you give the viewer of this piece a lot that helps them to understand what's going on for example you already mentioned like this this hammer and the and the nail here um, as, as weapons of choice against the, the huge crab and you all also see that there's the um, sword sticking in there here and there uh, there's some some um, some arrows or something sticking in there I guess so you see that that others already tried to fight this crap and it didn't work um, you see that the mouse is here like the, the ears bitten off they they have some it has some uh, piercings um, and and the, the whole clothing style has this one down um, pirate look that I think tells the viewer a lot, which is a nice, nice, nice um, thing. Uh, as for the art, um, I think what you what what would be uh, definitely something to that you could improve is to even show the size of the crab uh, a bit more. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit tricky, and it's it, you you picked something that is not so easy to to find the right composition for. But I feel like there's uh, although you're on a good way, there's room for improvement. That is, for example, that the the um, crab and the mouse do not overlay in any kind. Uh, so you see, you have the uh, the mouse quite. Look, Oops, um, looking quite straight. Wait a minute, wrong color. <laughs> so you have the mouse uh, looking quite straight ahead here, while I would imagine the mouse ha having to look up like this huge crab there. And um, this kind of could be uh, achieved by, I guess, um, bringing them on, a, on the same level on, on the same hor horizontal level so they overlay a bit but then making the crab again um, a little bit larger and a little bit higher so for example um, let me just quickly scribble this down so for example if we have a horizon line here and the mouse is um, wait a second just uh, what does the back side of, of a mouse's head look like you could even show the no nose here <laughs> maybe this doesn't look like a mouse now but you know what i mean i guess uh, maybe you should, could even show them the nose here like it has uh, to look up very very high and then you have uh I'm just quickly doing this um very very roughly and then you have the crab maybe really piling up to you have the, the underside here and um and the face of the crab would be some kind of on this level here. Um, 
I don't actually know what this looks like, but <laughs> uh, you know what I mean, I guess. So you have the horizon here. Uh, you can, of course, if you, if you think the horizon should be a bit lower, like in your image, you could, of course, set this lower. It's no problem. You could just take everything with you, and then you have more more space here to for for the palm trees and uh, to to show some clouds in the sky or so. Um, and uh, this is the most ugliest crap in the world, I know, <laughs> but I, I hope you see the difference. And you could even ex increase this um, by making the mouse a little bit slow, uh, smaller. And the smaller you, you make it, you see what happens, the smaller you make it. Um, of course, the, the far away it is, but also the, um, the bigger or more impressive the difference is. I would probably go with, with something like that. Um, and you have like this this more impressive uh, appearance of the crap here, I think. Uh, what I like is that you worked on uh, foreground here, so I like this these these um, botanical elements here. It's a bit. I was thinking when I saw it, I was thinking like, okay, what is this beach? What is this beach like? There's the water here is on the on the right, and then we have plants on the right where you probably I don't know probably would expect um, no plants to grow there because it's it's on the beach. Um, so I thought like, oops, uh, I thought like it probably make more sense to have the plants on the um, on the right, like that. And maybe here add some some rocks or something. I don't know um, something that that fits more to what you would expect to be like close to the water. But that's that's just maybe a really small thing to um, to consider. Um, but another thing that that is happening here, and that's what I actually wanted to 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 point towards here with the plants is. Um, I feel a slight imbalance in the in the image. Um, we can maybe mirror it one time and see. Um, it kind of it, it uh, weirdly drags kind of to this direction here, um, and it's it's really interesting. The plants um, you did a good job with with placing something here on this side because if you wouldn't do that. So if you if you had, for example, um, like only beach here and only sky here, maybe you, that was even your decision. You see that um, that you have a huge imbalance because here's a lot of stuff happening. Whoops, that was a bit large. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening here, and then there's nothing happening here. So so the de de decision to add something here on the left was good. Um, but it's it's um, it is kind of maybe it's the horizon that's falling off to the left a little bit or in the original of course uh, let's switch back to the right. Uh, the whole image has this this little drag to this horizontal um, line, and I think maybe it's even the uh, this piece of the crap here. What's what's that called? The claw, right? Is it a claw? I don't know. Um, so because this is bigger, which is fine, because you show the the perspective. So the the crab has one um, claw uh, closer to to us, and the other one drawn back a little bit, which is good, but maybe a little bit extreme here. So there's a couple of um, balancing and, and compositional things that um, uh, that would be possible to improve. And my idea personally would be to um, make the vegetation here very dense, very strong, add strong shadows here where the mouse comes out of the... And, and yeah, just to kind of illustrate that the mouse is coming out of like a real deep forest or something, if that fits to the story, of course. And then add some here as well. So the... For two reasons, um, story-wise, I would li like to, like it to have this. The, the beach opens up to the mouse, and there's this the, this beast uh, waiting for it. And uh, second is uh, composition and um, 
leading the eye of the viewer more to the center, to the to the crab here. Uh, so because some some overlaying foreground elements that point towards the center would, would be really nice here and would make it look more, even more impressive. So that's that. I would experiment with that just a little bit. Uh, maybe maybe also add some some rocks here, something that that makes the beach a little bit that gives it more structure. Um, maybe even makes the um, environment look more rough. So it's it's like a tough life out there for a little mouse, and um, it has to like uh, live in these very very um, extreme conditions. Although the weather's weather is fine there. <laughs> um, yeah, and the rest is just um, is just really um, working on it. You're in a very good way there. Um, I would think about like adding more details here. The, the, the shading is also a little bit off here on the on the rocks. That I uh, would probably give the rocks some um, some structure here, so you can add these shadows. Um, so it looks a bit more interesting. Maybe the the cliffs. Maybe give the cliffs a little tilt here, so they look they 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 coming towards the beach a little bit. Stuff like that to um, to add more details to make it a little bit more. Uh, yeah, to give it more tension, but that's that's just a couple of small things. Um, okay, so yeah, I hope that was helpful, uh, and I'm really looking forward to more uh, of these these um, pieces and more of, of yeah to, to see more of the uh, journey of this mouse. So I think it doesn't have to stop with just uh, three pieces, and like I said, a simple story can can. Um, be the base of, of something great. Uh, it, it's not a problem if, if you have a very simple, basic idea uh, that's in the end then spun over and over uh, to something more complex. So yeah, I'd love to see the mouse from, from the other side, of course, by the way. I would love to see its impression, like what it looks like. And um, I'm looking forward to it. All right, thanks. Uh, Dan for um, yeah for, for uh, submitting your piece and um, stay uh, active and happy drawing <laughs> so and for the last critique today we have uh, serious um, and we don't have a classic critique today this time but we have a more uh, kind of uh, yeah I don't know career advice or something <laughs> so uh, Sirius, you have been asking me to give you some feedback on um, yeah, you, a little bit of a personal story, uh, which is that you have wor been working pretty hard at being a full-time artist in the past and you burned out before it came sustainable. Um, and yeah, you, you, right now you have a corporate job that gives you financial stability and some breathing room for uh, which you're thankful, obviously. It's, it's a nice thing to have, right? Um, but you're still itching to shift my acti your activities towards creative work and being a full-time artist. Yeah, and uh, also you stumbled into NFTs, sold a few early on, and um, you would like to build a more solid presence in this space. Take it from there. Uh, you think you have the skills, but um, you're, you're lacking of organization, or probably, uh, I would say, maybe not organization, because that's, for me, it's always like a personal... Um, your personal organization of, of your time and uh, I would say probably you're uh, looking after working on your personal branding uh, building yeah like building up your personality uh, your online your online persona um, I think that's maybe what you mean here what I how I understand it I guess <clears throat> and of course that needs a certain um, part of organization kind of uh, making the right decisions, um, reacting to the market, especially with NFTs, of course, it's, it's very, very, yeah, it's interesting to talk about how to react uh, in a proper way to the market. So yeah, that's the, the questions we have here. Um, and uh, this is, of course, unusual as a, for an art critique, but I uh, um, specifically include this kind of advice uh, to, the, to the critique. And I'm glad you're taking this the, the chance to also not only have a look at your art, 
but also on your on your career because it's something I like to discuss and talk about a lot and uh, enjoy that very much. Um, but yeah, uh, please forgive me if I'm rambling along a little bit. Maybe I, I uh, add a couple of minutes on top of the usual 10 minutes uh, <laughs> if I ramble too much but because it's something that kind of for me is often like answers and, and good thoughts, thoughts often come from kind of a stream of stream of thoughts I have uh, uh, prior to that. So um, yeah, let's let's head into this. So the, the thing about, uh, especially when you uh, are in a corporate job is of course the, the, that gives you the safety net is of course you have like limited time. Uh, let me just um, quickly take some notes here. So we have like something to um, visualize instead of me uh, sitting in a, next to a white, a huge blank canvas. Uh, let me just write some some words down. Uh, so we have like we have one factor that is time. Uh, time is always limited for all of us, not only for for you working in a corporate job, but also for me because even when doing this full time, it's um, tough to manage time. Uh, then we have probably the decisions you want to make, and we have uh, maybe a market. I would say or. Um, uh, outer let's say let's call it outer influence because let's not focus this completely on nfts but on on a complete like on all the personal branding stuff um the thing here is um what what, what i want to point out here is we have have like a triangle of, of three factors that influence your your path um time decisions market uh, and other influence are kind of like basic pillars that that mark um, how you move in the space and move as an artist and uh, let's focus on on um, not on other influences because let's focus on the stuff that you can control right because uh, one thing is really important especially in the nft space uh, to realize that um, you have to focus on the stuff that you can control and the market is wild it's crazy i mean we have the the other uh, other um world uh drop yesterday uh it's, it's it went completely crazy you don't have this under your control let's not focus on that because that's um something i see a lot of people focus on but uh, like people um, complaining about not not getting into super air uh not making making sales because like the li liquidity is out of the market whatever you can't influence this so let's look at time and decisions the thing here that you that you can influence the most of course is decisions because uh your time we have 24 uh hours of the day that we can can use um so the the number one thing you can do is making decisions and uh this can also include like the decision to make more time, of course. So you can also say like, I make a decision to let's let's get into an extreme and say you make the decision to cancel your your day job or your corporate job, um, which I wouldn't, um, which is not a recommendation, but just an example in this case. So let's say you you cancel your job. Um, this gives you like plus eight more hours a day of uh, of time you can invest or spend on something else just an example maybe even more plus if you if you count in uh, some travel time and stuff like that um but it, it's all um still based on decisions because um what you do with the time is your decision and how you influence the time you have apart from the fact that you can't influence that that you only have 24 hours a day that you have to sleep eight hours a day that you have to eat uh that you have friends you, you should meet um, and and uh, whatever um, time you need to to relax, um, but apart from that, you, your decisions also influence um, um, what you can make out of a day. Um, and yeah, um, the thing is, I usually encourage everyone to experiment a lot. I know now now I know your, some of your works and I know your style, and I think you uh, let's say. Um, this is your style right now, right? This is what you do as art right now. 
And what you did to get there was making decisions. Uh, no, not like that. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, um, making decisions. Um, yeah, that doesn't also make sense. Let me just think. What is this? What is this infographic going to be? <laughs> um, oh yeah, sure. I mean, sorry. That was when I'm when I that was what I meant when rambling. I could cut this. I'm not cutting this because I want to think, keep things real. So you see, like me, really. Uh, so you're here at some point, like five years ago, and you have decisions like that. So that that's how it works exactly. So. No, you're making many, many decisions. Sometimes you even can come back to the one and one leads to your style. And you choose at, at some point, you choose this point, then you choose, choose this and this, and now it's here. And now um, we also have a lot of decisions, but they are narrowed down to, um, there's a lot of more, but they are narrowed down because you already found quite a distinctive style. So you probably, can close out these all these decisions or these op options but like go down a very very narrow road like you have like kind of um, guiding lines that you already defined in the process before and um, before I make this infographic even, even more weird and complex um, and uh, I think what you need to do is as you have let's say you have three or four hours a day that you dedicate to your your art, which is already a lot if you think about like that you have uh, uh, that you are working eight hours a day in a corporate job that you have to travel and all the stuff I've mentioned before. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's it would be very much if you even had these three or four hours. Respect if you can make it, um, and and you can dedicate yourself to that so much. Um, so. Uh, to not waste time that you have there, you have to make the right decisions, of course. Um, and um, this is where I think experimentation needs to, at your point now, needs to re be replaced with more focus on, on what you want to achieve. And uh, I think you should set yourself goals. Um, like your dream goal that set yourself a dream goal which pr probably would be uh to to sell uh, nfts for for a lot of money or be um like be able to cancel your corporate job to go full artist full freelance artist maybe that's your dream job uh, your dream goal and then you have to um cut it down to a little more some some more realistic goals i wouldn't i won't say that your dream goal isn't realistic for me personally my dream goal also was to be able to make um, a living from only my art and I didn't expect to get there, but it happened after a while. So it can it can all be can all happen. But we need to cut down the goals to more realistic ones and more small ones that we can go step by step and then focus on these. So, for example, uh, we have like a dream goal, dream goal, um, and uh, there's some some ways to get there, like some maybe some milestones. That's milestone one to three. And then we have even smaller little milestones like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. And then these can also be cut down to very small goals. For example, I mean, I saw you had your sale on, on Solana lately on form function, uh, which is great, which is also a small, small goal that you, you achieved. And there's uh, like creating a series, um, improving on, on your art. Um, I'm happy to help you with that. <laughs> uh, and, and, and improving on certain aspects, maybe even of your art and um, create your personal branding. Um, define, for example, what you want to st stand for. Um, social media algorithms, algorithms love to um, love you more if you have something very clear you stand for. I'm not, I'm not doing this in, an, in a perfectly ideal way, but I um, consciously decided <laughs> not to. But you could go this way and be like the artist that does this thing, you know, and um, step by step, you will get there. And this is probably when we come back to organization. And if I look at the watch or the clock now, uh, 
<laughs> let's come back to the beginning and then close this now. Um, there we are again on an organization and I think that's where organization really helps you, like organizing goals, um, having a look at your available time per day and see what is probably realistic to achieve with this available time. And you will make progress and you will make, um, you will get better, earn some money and eventually be able to maybe go half, half, uh, half time on your corporate job. Is that half time? Like, um, yeah, maybe, maybe you only work three days a week and invest two more days uh, into making your personal art. Um, so this was um, more structured for me than I expected. Uh, so sorry for the self... Um, for, for uh, <laughs> saying that, that I did something good myself, but um, I really hope that this was this was helpful for you. I hope that gave you some kind of impulses. Maybe take this as a little pep talk to keep on working because it's worth it. You, your art is good. I think you're on a good way. Um, and um, yeah, give me some feedback if, if, if this was good, if you would have expected something, some, some other input. Uh, from my side, uh, this would be really, um, this would be really helpful for me to uh, see if this kind of art critique, um, uh, career advice thing is is working well. And um, yeah, thanks very much, man, for being so supportive, for for being so active in the chat all the time. Uh, also to everyone else, of course, um, saying this not often enough. Uh, you guys make it worth uh, doing this, uh, and I'm I'm having a good time with you. So. Uh, yeah, have a nice Sunday and next week I'll be uh, offline most of the time, but um, we'll see each other after. Bye-bye.